From the dawn of civilization, cows have been an integral part of human life. In many countries, agriculture flourished for thousands of years without grossly disturbing the natural cycles of the environment because it was based on cows. Given the status of a mother in Indian culture, the holy cow is worshipped for her indispensable importance to human life. The role of cows in reviving sustainable rural life, very important, uh, more than important actually, absolutely essential aspect. Rural life, uh, village life, whether it is in India or anywhere around the world, is based actually on uh, the, what we could refer to as cow culture. However, the bond between cows and human culture was severed with the growth of science and technology following the Industrial Revolution. For instance, traditional agriculture practices in India were heavily dependent on cows. Bulls were engaged in plowing the soil before planting seeds and cow dung and cow urine were used in making natural fertilizers and pest repellents. But with the onslaught of chemical and petroleum derived pesticides and fertilizers, the cows have lost their place in agriculture. And across the country, if you take about 50-55% of the total chemical pesticides are consumed by the cotton farmers. The kind of chemical pesticides used not only increase the cost of cultivation, but also increase the pest resistance. As a result, farmers have to spray more or uh, more number of times or use more powerful pesticides or uh, make a concoction of these pesticides and then spray. And as a result, we have seen large number of pesticide poisoning cases happening and uh, farmers getting admitted uh, into hospitals and then dying during the spray. This is, this is one of the very common feature which we have seen in the farms in uh, Telangana. With the erosion of cow culture, a dangerous nexus has formed between toxic pesticides, costly chemical fertilizers, mechanized agriculture, genetically modified seeds and industrialized economies. This collusion has also led to the destruction of ecological balance and social happiness as evident in the millions of farmer suicides in India following the introduction of chemical agriculture in the so-called Green Revolution. Uh, it's only the industrialization which came in late uh, 19th century which has uh, started uh, what do you say, affecting the handcraft skills and with the fast life, the fast life which is setting in now has, uh, what do you say, taken away the livelihood means from the farmers and from the weavers and from artisans, from wood carvers. So, uh, the environment and the social context, if you look at both ways, doing uh, indigenous cotton farming and spinning yarn by hand and weaving cloth by hand on handle and dyeing it in natural dye, preparing your dyes from plants and natural uh, forest produce material uh, is the call of the day. Modern yes. agriculture system, uh, uh, due to the high cost, uh, there is a production system went down and the cost of the agriculture became very high. So it's very important that uh, we revive the connection between the cows and the farmers and the whole agriculture system. Uh, if you see the number of uh, suicide rate actually is more in cotton farmers. So we at Amshu, what we are trying to do here is uh, connect back this connection between uh, cows and farmers, especially in the uh, cotton cultivation. There is a solution and we want to be a part of it. Amshu is our humble effort to revive traditional technologies and techniques in cloth making and begin untangling the mess one thread at a time. Bringing back cows into our culture can happen easily when we localize our lifestyles and live simply in villages. So these things cannot take place unless we have people who are localized. And this is a very essential theme actually in the Vedic culture to become localized uh, where all of these different um, trades and activities and, and, and uh, uh, technologies can be taken up in a very natural and systematic way. Amshu began in 2016 with six farmers, 11 cows and 19 acres of land spread across a small village in South India named Polkampalli. 
Here, we are training farmers to cultivate indigenous organic cotton using cow-based natural farming practices. And we are generating opportunities for local artisans to make and sell hand-spun, hand-woven and naturally dyed cloth from harvested cotton. Traditional technologies were very, very important, uh, especially in villages. Mm, nowadays, we have, to a large extent, abandoned these technologies that have to do with uh, bringing water uh, in a more simple and natural way, in uh, uh, making cloth. Amshu is working on preserving and reviving traditional technologies of cloth making. For example, to remove seeds from cotton, we use hand-cranked wooden tools. Dust and dirt are removed from the cotton using a bow-like wooden device called Vidhunoti, the likes of which have been used in India for several thousands of years. The humble charka was elevated to being a symbol of India's independence in the British era when Mahatma Gandhi urged Indians to spin their own yarn, which was a daily chore for them, before the East India Company dismantled India's rural cloth economies. Since village life has changed much in post-independence India, we use the Ambar Charka, an improvised version that helps us provide employment to rural women in Polkampalli. Chemical dyes derived from petroleum and toxic heavy metals are commonplace in the modern textile industry. In contrast, Amshu uses natural dyes obtained from plant parts such as flowers, roots, seeds and bark, which have traditionally adorned handmade yarn and cloth. Cow products such as cow urine, cow milk and cow dung are often used in the dyeing processes which were developed in an era when humans lived close to nature. It is not impossible to develop systems centered on cow culture to produce cloth, even if it is not easy to establish them. Although not all ancient technologies are immediately replicable, we are using some of them to reduce the social and ecological costs that are externalized by modern industries. We have employed nearly 20 people in the process of reviving these age-old cow-based cloth technologies. Every Amshu shirt you buy plays part in building the new future. As we embark on shaping our own lives around the philosophies of Goseva, Ahimsa and Swarajya, we have also touched the lives of others around us. Not only have we revived the livelihoods of 20 people, including weavers, yarn spinners and farmers, we have also invested in their betterment by offering training and support. <laughs> More people, uh, more livelihood can be created and the know-how can be popularized if the youth of the country come forward. And that's how I see today in Amsho initiative that youth has come forward. Educated, highly intellectually inclined a group of people have come together to make this initiative uh, to go to the grassroots level and make the difference in the society and in the environment. Polkampalli is but one village and Amshu is but one project. What we have accomplished and hope to accomplish is a fraction of what is truly necessary to rebuild the social systems that uphold the relationship between cows and humans. There is so much more to be done. Cow culture is calling upon each one of us to contribute in whatever ways we can as consumers, investors, experimenters, entrepreneurs or advocates to further this movement on to the future generations. Shita Ram Sasya